Hello, welcome to another program of Study the Word. This program is brought to you every week by the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets in Newburgh, Indiana, 5600 Van Road, which is two miles east of Castle High School, right off Highway 261. Folks, we extend you a warm invitation. We hope that you will come and assemble with us as we are just simply Christians who have come together to, to serve our Lord. And if you're interested in just studying the scriptures and wanting to worship our God in spirit and in truth, according to John chapter 4 and verse 24, then please come and be with us. Now, if you can't come and be with us, we remind you that we stream our services live over our website. Just go to www.riverridgechurch.org and you can click on the icon there and watch our services our Bible study, our worship service, even our midweek Bible study on Wednesdays. And if you don't go there during those actual times, you don't have to watch it live, although you could. We save all our programs in the archives, so you can go back and watch any of our past services. We've uploaded these TV programs, all our past programs, all those Bible questions and Bible answers. Please uh, glance through them. You might find those rather helpful to you. Also, we are uploading our past weekly bulletins. We have a number of our viewers that have requested to be put on our weekly mailing list. If you'd like to receive free our bulletin, please give us a call and uh, we'll put you on the list. If you have a Bible question, we'd love to hear from you. We deal with those on this program and on our radio program. I bring up the radio program right now because a question we looked at last week I'm actually going to do a TV program on it because I know not all our viewers are able to listen to our live radio program that airs every Sunday at 2 o'clock on 98.5 FM. If you're out of the Newburgh Evansville listening area, it only covers a radius of maybe about 30 miles. Um, you can also go to our website and click on the icon and listen. Now, they don't save them in the archives, so if you're going to listen to our live radio program, you have to go to our website at 2 o'clock every Sunday afternoon, and you can listen to it no matter where you are in this country. Matter of fact, any country. We even had some friends from other countries tell me that they have listened to our radio program as it airs. All right, what did we talk about last week? What's our Bible question this week? Well, it's based on a passage over in 2 Timothy chapter 4. So I'm going to go ahead and read the text and I'm going to give you the question of the day. 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul tells Timothy in verse 2, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up, heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Now, the question at hand is, why are these religious people? Now, yes, they are religious people. How do I know they're religious people? Well, you'll notice what it says in verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine or sound teaching. So they had been listening to it. They had been obeying it. But they're going to turn away from it. And so these are religious people. Now, what's interesting in our question is, how come these people just didn't stop being religious? If you're not going to listen to sound teaching, why would you get teachers, get other religious leaders, and, and go listen to them when they're not teaching the exact truth that you find within the scriptures? Why, why do people do that? Why not just leave? Well, I think the obvious um, answer to that, this is one of five that we're going to look at, but the obvious one is people are going to feel that they don't want to give up religion altogether. And which is a powerful point for all of us to keep in mind. Because just being religious doesn't mean you're right with the Lord. There are lots and lots of religious people. I'm a religious person. But I'm not right with the Lord just because I'm religious. 
Now, if I'm not religious, then obviously I'm not going to be pleasing to the Lord because I'm not trying to serve our Creator. But, you know, just as a quick example, you have over in Matthew, the 15th chapter, you have people who are religious, but Jesus called them hypocrites in verse 8. He said, these people draw near to me. They draw near to me with their mouths. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So they, they say they want to worship the Lord, they talk about the Lord, they sing about the Lord, but they're not following the doctrine, the sound doctrine that Paul admonished Timothy to do. And so what we're going to do with the remainder of our program as we answer the question, why do people turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables? Why do people just leave a church that they don't like what they're hearing there? Be, you know, and I'm just going to go over here and listen to this guy. Um, well, if they're not leaving error to follow the truth, here's the reason why people will go listen to somebody that's not preaching sound doctrine. First of all, other than the fact that people still want to remain religious and they think that's okay, is that people don't like to feel guilty. It's a reason why uh, they're not going to listen to Timothy. Of course, this is why Paul's telling Timothy, look, you preach the word, and you be instant in season and out of season. You preach it when they like it and when they don't like it. Because you're not really going to be a help to them if you just tickle their ears. That's what it said. They had itching ears, and so they were going to get teachers that are going to make them feel good. And so Paul's telling Timothy, look, you just preach the word. And Paul understood that there are going to be people who don't want to feel guilty. And when they don't want to feel guilty, they'll just turn their ears away. That's exactly what you have over in Acts, the seventh chapter, as an example. Here is Stephen preaching, and he says to them in verse 51, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become betrayers and murderers. Now notice verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. And of course, uh, it says in verse 58, um, they cast him out of the city, and they stoned him. You know, people who don't want to feel guilty, they're not going to listen. They don't want to listen. So the best way to handle their guilt is to remove themselves from it. Isn't that what people do? We, we notice that Adam and Eve did that in the garden. They ate the fruit, and what did they do when they heard God walking? They, they hid themselves. And that's what people do. If, if you can just separate yourself, if I don't have to listen to people like Timothy who are preaching the, the sound doctrine, I'm going to feel better. And so people, you want to feel better when you don't want to hear the, the truth? Go somewhere else. Stop listening to them. But, but still be religious because you're going to feel good that you're still religious. But that's one of the reasons, folks is people don't want to feel guilty. Now, you say, Chuck, have you ever felt guilty? Well, sure, I felt guilty. But what you do with your guilt, because you noticed here in Acts 7, it says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. That's the opposite of what you have in Acts chapter 2. When they heard the preaching, it said when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they wanted to do what the Lord wanted them to do, and they obeyed the gospel. Those in Acts chapter 7 were cut to the heart, but they didn't want to listen. So, yeah, you can feel guilty and react with anger, or you can feel guilty and humble yourself and do what the Lord tells you to do. That's why Paul told Timothy, you're going to convince, you're going to rebuke, you're going to exhort. There are times when people are, are going to be thankful that you pointed out their error, that you corrected them and helped them to stay on the straight and narrow. But the majority won't like it because they don't want to feel guilty and so their solution is I'm not going to listen to that it's not really a solution oh it's a solution to pacify them 
but someday they're going to stand before the Lord. So that's one of the obvious reasons why people want to stay religious, even though they're religiously wrong. Another thing is because people don't like to feel obligated. See, when, when people like Paul and Timothy are preaching, they're telling people that they need to do things. You know, if you're going to make necessary changes in your life, a lot of people like to talk about the Bible. They want to talk about how spiritual they are and they want to quote verses found in the Bible. But when it comes right down to actually changing their lives, stepping it up and growing, no, 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 no. And and a person might think that if you're going to start teaching me that I need to step it up and be a leader within the congregation, I need to use my talents, I'm out of here. You know that old concept of people just want to sneak in, in the back and and be the last ones to arrive and the first ones to leave. They just don't want to have any responsibilities. You know, James dealt with that in James, the first chapter. He says in verse 21, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Right? Well, of course, those in, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, they didn't want that word which is able to save their soul. They wanted to hear words that were going to tickle their ears. And then he went on to say in verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You know, we need to be developing. We need to be growing. And so as you teach the word of God, what Timothy was admonished to do is to commit these words to faithful men so they might be able to teach others also. You know, to bear one another's burdens. You know, the stronger we get, there are things that we're able to do. Listen to this in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 tells us in verse 12, For though by this time you need, you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and have come need of milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteous, for he's a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So those in 2 Timothy chapter 4 that, you know what, we don't want to endure sound doctrine anymore, we don't want to listen to Timothy anymore, we want to listen to fables, try to get them to be teachers. Try to get them to come, to, come and sit down with me and have a Bible study. They don't have anything. Oh, they can quote some scriptures, but they're not, they're not handling the word as, as the Hebrew writer says. They're not skilled in the Word. They still need the milk of the Word. They haven't grown. They ought to be teachers by now. You're not going to put them in a, in a, public, uh, in a, pulp, in a pulpit, so to speak, um, teaching others when they don't even understand what the Bible teaches. You see, that's one of the reasons, folks, why people will turn away from sound doctrine. Because they want to stay religious even though it's religiously wrong, in their mind, you know, not being religious would just be wrong. But to not listen to sound doctrine, they need to understand that's wrong too. And for someone to say, well, I don't want to feel guilty, or I don't want to feel obligated that I have to step up and do things. These are reasons why people don't want to listen to the truth. And I hope as I'm going through this study today that I'm not describing you, because if that's you, you need to change your ways. You need to be the person that says, you know what, no, I want sound doctrine. If I need to be corrected, I want to be told. If I need to be rebuked, I need to be told. If I'm doing what's right, I need to be encouraged. But the point is, I want all of God's Word and not just part of it. I don't want to hear what I want to hear. I need to hear, I just used it, I want to hear what I need to hear. And I need to hear the Word of God in all aspects, not just certain verses that I like to quote, my pet passages, and that gives me comfort and that gives me hope, but yet you have all this found in the scriptures that we are supposed to accept. All right. What's another reason why people will turn their ears away from sound doctrine? The answer is, if I go to Mark chapter 13, you're going to understand that for those people who listen to sound doctrine, who obey sound doctrine, 
are those who will stand out. They're going to be different. And there are times when religious people, they don't want to stand out. Jesus said in Mark 13, verse 13, And you will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll be hated. Well, I'm a person, I don't want to be hated, you know, for Christ's sake. You know, I want to follow Christ, but for his sake, I don't want to stand out and, and be ridiculed. Look what he said in the verse before that. Now, brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise up against his parents and cause them to be put to death. There will be those people who won't stand for the truth and will turn on family. I get that. And people won't stand up for the truth because, you know what, it might go against what mom believes. It might go against what dad believes. It might go against what their grandparents believed or their friends believe. And, and there are people who want to be religious, but they don't want to be that strict so that the worldly people will still embrace them. They'll still like to be around them because they've learned to compromise. You know, just go along. And, 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 and here's, here's an interesting passage. Over in 1 Peter chapter 4, listen to this. Listen to these words. 1 Peter chapter 4, it says in verse 3, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in licentiousness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood a dissipation speaking evil of you. Well, there'd be religious people going, Man, I don't want anybody to think me some kind of weirdo, some kind of freak. And so you know what, if, if, if I'm in a situation, I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm not going to tell people, no, I'm not going to tell people that's sinful or that's wrong. And the Bible says it. No, no, I don't want to stand out, you know. I don't want to point the finger at error. I don't want to tell anybody anybody's wrong, even though I know what the Bible teaches. But I'm not going to tell anybody because you know what, I don't want to stand out. Listen, do you know why Jesus was killed? because he opened his mouth. People didn't want to hear what he had to say. Jesus wouldn't have died. They wouldn't have crucified him if he had kept his mouth shut. But the more he spoke, the more people what felt guilty. They felt obligated. And they didn't like that. Um, it made them look bad. And they didn't want to change because if they changed, the majority of the religious people that were in error would have hated them, which is a classic case with Saul. Saul was... You know, uh, you talk about a Pharisee, a Pharisee. I mean, he persecuted the church. When he became a Christian, what happened? Those Pharisees and those others that were caught up in Judaism turned against Paul. They turned against him. They wanted him dead. Wait a minute, he once was one of you guys. You know, weren't you guys friends? Doesn't matter. People turn. People don't want to stand out. That's why they don't want to change. And, and that's one of the reasons why people will heap up for themselves, teachers having itching ears. You know what? I can either go to where the, the, the doctrine is preached that is sound, all right, that it's unique and it's the Lord's truth, or I can go somewhere else where somebody says, well, everybody's right. Nobody's really wrong. You know, I don't want to go to a religious group that says, you know, that narrow is the way that leads to life. I don't want to go where it says, Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. I want to go over here where they preach. Jesus built many different denominations. That's where I want to go because everybody's okay. Well, I understand why people do that. I get it. People don't want to stand out. And, and Jesus taught lesson after lesson when he walked on the face of this earth of the, of the repercussions of standing up for what is right and people will make fun of you. But remember Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We're not to be conformed to this world, but we're, we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We're to be lights in a world of darkness, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. We don't hide our light under a bushel. You see, here's the point. That, that illustration that Jesus came gave, rather, in, in Matthew chapter 5, you know, you put your light on a candle stand, and you know, 
it, it, it illuminates so everybody can see. So don't put it under a bushel. Now you remember, when he still used that illustration, you've got your light and you put it under a bushel, nobody else can see it. Well, the light is still there. And see, there's where people are convinced they're okay because they're going, well, I'm still religious. I just don't want to stand out like a sore thumb. I don't want to tell other people that, well, the Bible teaches that's wrong and you're sinning. Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Of course you don't. And that's why people will leave and they'll listen to people that are not teaching sound doctrine. Now keep in mind, those in, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 that Paul talked about to Timothy, when he said, now look, at, they're going to turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Paul wasn't telling Timothy that those people are going to be, believe that they're fables. No! They're going to believe they've turned to the truth. You can imagine if you would talk to any of those people that left Timothy. I mean, if you'd say, hey, I heard you were listening to Timothy at one time, um, so why did you leave? Do you think they're going to say, well, it's because we didn't want the truth anymore and we wanted to hear lies? No, they're going to say, Timothy is teaching error and this guy is telling the truth. So who do we believe? Well, you believe what Paul said about it. Paul is writing by inspiration. What Timothy was teaching was the truth. And those people who taught contrary to that were teaching fables. But you're not going to convince everybody of that. There'll be those who will say, no, no, these lies are actually the truth. And there's nothing that I can do but it. If a person wants to believe a lie, nothing I can do but it. I've learned a long time ago there's two things I can't control. People who tell lies and people who believe lies. Can't control that. Alright, final point, and the lesson will be yours today. It was another reason why people just don't leave religion. I mean, if you don't like to hear the truth, just leave it all together. Well, no. They're just going to go and listen to somebody else and because they're going to have itching ears because people don't want to admit that they're wrong. That's one of the biggest problems we have today. It's, it's pride. You know, it's, it's easier to just get angry at Timothy. It's, it's easier just to leave and stomp out and go listen to somebody so you don't feel guilty anymore. You don't feel obligated. You can go to a place now where uh, you don't have to admit that you're wrong. If you've done something wrong publicly, you don't have to, to deal with it. You know, because again, that makes people feel guilty. It kind of reminds me of what we have over in John chapter 9. And here is a man standing up for the truth. He was healed of his blindness and the religious leaders of that day didn't want to give Jesus credit for it. And they, they brought this blind man who's now, who now can see of course, they brought this, this person who was healed before them a second time and he basically tells these religious leaders in verse 32 of John 9 he says, since the world began, it has been unheard that anyone opened the eyes of one who has been born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. That was what he was saying to these religious leaders. Look, this person, which was Jesus, you know, how could he do this unless he's from God? I mean, it's unheard of that somebody could make a person who was born blind what he can see. Well, that's logical, and that's right. How did the religious leaders of that time react? They said in verse 34, ah, he said, he said, uh, you're completely born in sins. Are you teaching us? And they cast him out. See, they're not going to admit that they're wrong about Jesus. That's the last thing they're going to do. You know, people don't want to admit that they're wrong about doing something. And that they need to change their ways and they need to to study to show themselves approved and everything that we say and do must be authorized by the Word of God. People want to preach their feelings, their emotions, their think-sos rather than just giving a thus saith the Lord. People want to quote scriptures but they want to use it inconsistently and contradict other passages of scripture. It's not going to cut it and that's what we talked about a little bit earlier of people who don't want to study to become more knowledgeable and be able to teach others um, there's just a lot of problems that, that people face when they leave the truth and when they want to go listen to error. Why would people want to do that? Well, we looked at a few today. 
And I would hope that we would not let pride get in our way and that we will listen to the truth and, and search the scriptures to see whether things are so. And that's what happened in Acts 17.11. People don't need to become man followers. Where I preach, you know, I, I got up and preached last Sunday night. I said, you know what? I told all the congregation there, I says, when somebody says to me, Chuck, they just believe whatever you say. I told the congregation last Sunday in preaching, and you can check it out on, the, on, on our website because it saves all our lessons. I told them all, I said, can you imagine that? The person who says that you all believe it just because I say it, they're saying that you people are mindless, blind followers of Chuck. How insulting can that be? Think for yourself is the point. If I teach error, people are going to show me from here that it's wrong. But, just like Paul told Timothy, Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Why? Because there will come a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that's why there's a lot of religious leaders who get in the pulpit today and they don't preach on any specifics. They don't want to say that this particular doctrine over here is wrong. They don't want to get up and make people feel guilty about maybe an unscriptural marriage or things that they're doing that are sinful. They don't want to do that. They don't want to look like the bad guy. I think those people could learn a lesson from what Paul told Timothy because there's not a lot of people today that are getting in the pulpits who are just preaching the word. They're getting people worked up with their emotions and they're not giving them a book, chapter, and verse. Folks, are you fed up with the religious error that's out there? Till you get to that point, you're just going to be like the majority. You need to stand against it. You need to, to check things out. You can say, Chuck, what? I've got questions. Call me up. Let's set up a Bible study. Face to face. Had a couple yesterday. Got one tonight. Uh, others tomorrow. Throughout the week, people that just say, can we come and just study the scriptures together? If you're interested in a Bible study, I'll just bring my Bible. Um, don't want anything. It doesn't cost anything. And if you're interested, just call. We'll set up a time. Would you like a free home Bible study course? We'll mail that out to you. Folks, don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, our website. Don't forget our live, our live radio program every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, 98.5 FM. Please come and be with us. The River Ridge Church of Christ meets at 5600 Van Road in Newburgh. If you want to call for directions in our times of services, they're on our website, but you can call. Folks, I want you to have yourselves a great week. We hope you'll be back here next time because we're going to come together and we're going to open up our Bibles and we're going to study the Word. Thank you and have yourselves a great day.